A composite is a combination of materials where the combined materials remain physically distinct. An example of a composite is glass reinforced plastic, that is GRP. It is made up of glass fibre reinforcement material embedded in epoxy resin, polyester resin or vinyl ester resin. So the composite consists of two parts. Number one, glass fibre reinforcing material and two, a polymer resin matrix. The glass fibre reinforcement may be strands, chop strand mat or woven rovings. The polymer matrix flows around the glass fibre and solidifies. The polymer matrix and the glass fibre reinforcement remain distinct materials in the mixture. The polymer matrix simply holds the glass fibre reinforcement in place. The manufacturing process of this textile composite illustrates how the plastic film and the fabric sheet are combined but remain distinct components in the composite. So, to go back to the composite, glass reinforced plastic. Glass reinforced plastic, or GRP, is a strong and light material that's used to make a wide range of products including yachts, aircraft and vehicles of all types. Glass reinforced plastic products are nearly always made using moulds. As the GRP will take up the exact shape of the mould, it is important that the mould has no dirt, defects or blemishes in it that could spoil the surface of the finished GRP moulding. The mould is thoroughly cleaned, polished with wax and a liquid release agent is brushed, sponged or sprayed all over the inside of the mould and allowed to dry. Next, a thin even layer of coloured gel coat is spread all over the inside of the mould. The gel coat will be the coloured outside layer of the finished moulding. The gel coat is prepared by mixing polyester resin, a pigment, that is a colouring agent, a catalyst and a hardener in the correct quantities. After it has been spread evenly over the inside of the mould, it is left to cure and harden. Once the gel coat is cured, strand glass fibre mat is laid all over the inside of the mould. Next, a measured quantity of resin, catalyst and hardener are mixed and the mixture is stippled into the glass fibre mat. Then a roller is used to ensure that the resin is spread evenly all over the mould. After rolling, the glass reinforced composite is left to cure and harden. Once the first GRP layer has cured and hardened, further layers may be added, leaving the GRP to cure and harden before each new layer is added. Before the GRP has fully cured, excess material is carefully trimmed off the edge of the mould with a very sharp knife. The GRP product is left in the mould to fully cure for a few days. When the GRP has fully cured, it is knocked out of the mould. The glass reinforced plastic moulding is then ready to use. The pultrusion process is another way of making a polymer composite. The process involves pulling reinforcing fibres through resin, a preformer, then a heated dye which gives the composite its final shape and cures and hardens it. Reinforcing fibres are pulled through a tank of resin which covers the fibres in resin. Then through a preformer which forces the fibres roughly into shape. Then through heated dyes which force the resin covered fibres into the final shape. The composite rod or tube cures and hardens. A circular saw cuts the cooled and hardened composite rod into useful lengths as it travels. Here are typical examples of pultruded polymer composites. Examples of fibres used in pultrusion are glass fibre, carbon fibre, aramid fibre, that is Kevlar. Examples of resins used in pultrusion are vinyl ester resin, epoxy resin, polyester resin and phenolic resin. Filament winding involves pulling glass fibre strands through a resin tank, then winding the resin covered glass fibre reinforcement onto a rotating shaft called a mandrel. As the resin gels and cures, it bonds the fibre filament windings 
and forms a rigid tube of fibre reinforced polymer composite on the mandrel. When the resin has fully cured, the mandrel is removed, leaving the polymer composite tube. The filament windings can be clearly seen on this carbon fibre fishing rod. Making a composite product by resin transfer moulding involves pumping polymer resin and catalyst through a mixing chamber into a mould that contains glass fibre reinforcement. The first stage involves opening the mould. Then glass fibre mat reinforcement is laid inside the heated mould. The heated plug is lowered, closing the mould. Polymer resin and catalyst are pumped through a mixing chamber into the mould where the mixture saturates the glass fibre reinforcement. When the resin has cured and hardened, the composite product is ejected from the mould. Next, I'll briefly describe the process of moulding sheet moulding compound by compression moulding. Sheet moulding compound is a thermosetting compound made from fibreglass strands between layers of polyester resin. The uncured compound may be coiled, then later uncoiled and cut into the required sized sheets. First, the sheet of sheet moulding compound is fixed in the heated mould. Next, the heated plug is lowered compressing the sheet moulding compound. Excess material is trimmed off. The mould stays closed until the thermal setting composite has cured and hardened. The mould is opened when the composite has cured and hardened and the composite product is ejected. Dough moulding compound, or DMC, is a dough-like substance. The main ingredients are resin, that is unsaturated polyester resin or epoxy resin, and chopped glass fibres, usually up to about 12.5 mm long, and other additives that will give the DMC its required physical and chemical properties. The dough moulding compound is formed into products by compression moulding. The moulding process has four main stages. The first stage is charging the mould with DMC. A measured amount of dough moulding compound is placed into the heated female mould, that is the yolk. The second stage involves closing the mould. The heated male side of the mould, that is the plug, is closed, forcing the dough moulding compound into the mould cavities. Heat from the mould initially softens the dough moulding compound so that it flows into every part of the mould very accurately. Then it cures the compound. The third stage involves curing the compound. The mould stays closed until heat from the mould cures and hardens the compound, usually within about two to three minutes. The mould is opened and the composite product is ejected from the mould. The cycle is ready to start again. Medium density fiberboard, MDF, is a wood composite made by combining fine wood particles with glue and additives and shaping the mixture by heat and pressure. MDF may be given various surface finishes including paint, wood veneers, melamine and other decorative laminates. Chipboard is a wood composite made from tiny chips of wood that have been bonded together with an adhesive and additives under heat and pressure. Various surface finishes are available including wood veneer, melamine, plastic foils and resin impregnated papers. Oriented Strand Board or OSB is a wood composite made from wood strands that are arranged in cross-oriented layers, compressed and bonded using waterproof adhesives. Plywood is a wood composite made from wood veneers that are compressed and bonded using adhesives. There are always odd numbers of veneers, for example 5, 7, 9, etc. and each veneer layer is laid at right angles to the one next to it. Plywood is sometimes made using expensive fine wood outer layers and poorer quality wood inner layers, for example mahogany faced plywood and teak faced plywood. Metal composites are typically made from a metal matrix with a core of metal or polymer reinforcement. For example, overhead power cables are often made from an aluminium conducting outer casing or matrix encasing a steel or carbon fiber reinforcing core. Concrete is a composite of cement, sand and stone chippings. Water is used to create a chemical reaction in the cement 
which forms a paste and binds the sand and stone chippings into a solid hole as it dries and hardens. Small quantities of concrete may be mixed with a shovel. Larger quantities are mixed with a cement mixer. A wooden mould is made and steel reinforcing rods and hoops are placed into it. The concrete is poured and allowed to harden for several days, then the plywood shuttering is removed. The concrete gets paler as it dries out. So to recap, a composite material consists of at least two parts. One part being a material that gives the composite its special properties, for instance its strength, electrical conductivity, electrical resistance or its wooden appearance etc. And the other being a matrix material that binds it all together. Finally, I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope that you found this video helpful.